Hi, how's it going? I'm Marlena. Thanks for wandering by. I am excited today because I've got a little bit of a mini haul. Um, I got some new decks. Um, some were sent to me um, as a gift and um, the others I purchased myself, but I've been trying to at least once a month, like gather any new decks that have come in and, you know, kind of walk through or flip through and show you <clears throat> what I got. Um, so yeah, so I have eight decks here. Two of them are oracles and the rest are tarot. Well, there's one that, there's one that is like question mark. <laughs> So stick around with me. Um, and yeah, uh, these are all new to me decks, although they're not like brand new out in the tarot oracle world. All right, so let's just, yeah, let's get started. Right here, let's start here with the eighth house tarot and astrological tarot deck. This deck, um, it's an indie deck. I'm gonna leave links for everything down below. This deck is an indie deck um, and I first saw it, I think I first saw this deck on um, Meg's channel, Rose Honey Ritual. And I'm not sure if this is the version that she has. I can't remember. Look at that, that's, that's cool. I don't usually like do production stuff and boxes and things. I usually just show you the cards. It has a little guidebook. Just, um, okay, so some write-ups for the majors are like one page and then the um, minors just get, looks like they just get like one, one keyword or a couple keywords. Okay. So I saw this for the first time on Meg, uh, Rose Honey Rituals channel. And oh, here are the, let me show you the backs. This is the backs. And then it's got this really cool kind of deep green. I don't know if you can see it. It might look black to you, but it's green like an emerald green edging, which is really nice, matte. Um, so yeah, so I saw it on Meg's channel and I got really excited about it because it has the Deccans, um, it has all the astrological and elemental and uh, course, so it's an astrological deck, right? Yeah, an astrological tarot deck. So it has the Deccans on it too. Um, I have flipped through this once already, but I haven't like taken a good look. Um, and it's a collage, you know, photo collage. I'm not sure if it's digital or analog. I can't tell the difference. Dawn can tell me because <laughs> she can tell. Um, I'm already like, I'm the only thing so far, like I'm kind of disappointed by is that these um, titles are so big that they like you see they, they like intrude on the artwork and that's a bummer that's kind of a bummer for me but otherwise I think this deck is really really cool like I'm loving the simplicity like the minimalism of it that's what I mean when I say simplicity but you see like how this title is like taking over into the um into the artwork. So all the majors have their corresponding sign or planet. I really like that. I really like it. God, look at that. I love that for the death card. Yeah, I love this neon kind of thing going on. I'm not sure that's my favorite for the devil. Um, yeah, see, like, this is, that's a shame that that title is there. I wonder if there's a different version of this. I, I'm pretty sure there is a different version of this that doesn't have titles like that. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. So it looks like the, the um, majors have a green border and then all of the minors have this pink, kind of pink border. And then like salmon, is it salmon or baby pink? And then all of the, so then here are all the court cards and they have that emerald green, that like hunter green, that dark green. So yeah, so you can see here, it has the, um, on the aces, it has all three of the air signs 
on there and the symbol for air. I like that. Um, oh, so it's all ace. Oh, so they're in, they're in um, order of each number. Ace of fire, ace of water. Okay, so then now we get into the minors two through 10 and it goes twos. So you see how it has the Deccan. So like two of air, two of swords is moon in Libra. Two of earth. I wonder if I was out of frame there. Two of fire, Mars and Aries. See, that was our first, that was our first Deccan card in March. I, 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 I like the, I like a lot of it. I'm just like bummed about that, that title. Like, why is it so big and why is it covering up the artwork? It could have been so small, like on the border. Ugh, I don't know. It's just a, a design choice that is not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have made myself. The fives. Sixes. So it looks like some of it is it Waite Smith, you know, kind of inspired not like nods here. And then some things feel much more um seven of air, moon and aquarius feel much more tied to the um the astrology. Saturn and Taurus, which is yeah, see like this is where we are. Um, in Taurus 3 as I'm filming this, but it might come out after, this might come out after we change the Deccan over. So it's cool. I'm really excited to use it. I, I love photo collage. That's minimal. Well, that's not always true either. <laughs> that's not always true either. All right, I better start flipping through this faster. I'm never gonna get through all these decks. So here are the court cards. Mm, I don't love that. I like that. I wish it didn't have these um, crowns. I wish it was, I don't know. It's kind of like, you have to turn it landscape. Oh, I love this. I love the Knight of Earth. And then it has uh, earth, yeah, earth of air, fire of air, water of air. Yeah, so it gives, um, so the pages are earth, yeah, and the queens are water, queen. See, like, why put that crown there? This crown's not so bad. So it's cool. I think it's neat and I'm going, I'm excited to use it. Um, I want to see how it works. I definitely want to use it for the Deccans for sure, but maybe my Deccan readings. I'm not sure. We'll see where you end up. Okay. So another deck, um, that I got purchased myself. So I purchased that one myself and I purchased this myself recently too. I'm going to be talking more about this in my May, um, end of the month, month gone by sort of video, sort of, no, it's my month gone by video. That's what it's called. Um, because I, uh, for our monthly medicine in the month of May, we had a fairy tale theme and one of the weeks was an Alice theme. Um, Alice in Wonderland theme. So I went ahead and I've been eyeing this Disney Alice um, deck for quite some time. And I went ahead and, you know, purchased it. Um, this is a, um, this is an Inside Editions deck and it's a Pip deck. Here are the backs and I edged mine in this like mustard color that kind of makes it look kind of gold, matches the kind of gold kind of accent there. So it's a pip deck for sure. This is out of order, um, unlike the other one. Oh, I turned it around because it's the hangman. How many of us do that? Oh my God. Um, it's out of order because I've been working with it. I worked with it last week and I have to say, I really, really like this deck. I do not mind the pips, even though they are like what we would, they're not like super inspired in terms of um, anything really. Like it's just, you know, copies of hedgehogs and spears and 
teacups and stuff. The arrangements are a little bit different. Like you can kind of work with the arrangements, but I was um, really testing my knowledge or my work with numerology. And so I'll get more into that when I do my month gone by, but I, um, I wanted to kind of figure out what, like, cause there's different ways, you know, numerology is different for different people. Like the numbers can mean different things. Um, and I remembered that in the, um, Margaret Peterson tarot um, and the guidebook. Margaret Peterson has a write-up of the numbers that I like absolutely just totally aligned, like aligns with my, the way that I see things. So that's, um, that's what I did. I, I wrote that down and I was using it. And it's funny cause you know, I didn't end up getting a lot of number cards. <laughs> I got a lot of court cards and majors, which is funny cause I'm like all gearing up. Well, these cups are different colors. That's interesting. And the patterns are different on the cups. That's interesting too. I'm not sure if that means anything. The difference in the hedgehogs are that some are sleeping and some are awake and the arrangements are a little bit different. The colors, you know, there's a little bit to do. There's a little bit here in terms of like the arrangement of the, the, the spears um, are the least and, you know, least kind of have, you know, much to work with. And I guess the flowers too. Um, the spears are the, the spears are the swords and the flowers are the wands or do I have that backwards? I don't want to get into the guidebook right now, but anyway, I Alice in Wonderland. It, you know, the Disney version is my is my Alice. Like I grew up with that um, cartoon, and I had have read Alice in Wonderland, the Lewis Carroll, and through the Looking Glass. But like the Disney, the Disney version is my is my you know my story, the one that I. No, and this is just, this is actually just a really good deck. I, I, I really enjoyed using it and I will talk more in depth about that when I do my month gone by, but I just kind of wanted to flip through and show you um, the Alice in Wonderland tarot. All right, so let's move on to, let's talk about a deck that um, I was gifted by a lovely, generous person who, um, I was chatting with um, and they had gotten this deck and it just wasn't for them. And I love me a weird out there deck. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I forgot to check and see if it was okay with that person to mention their name, so I'm not going to. Um, but they're a lovely console, you know who you are. Um, good friend, good friend of mine. So this is the, obviously, the Hieronymus Bosch Tarot. Um, and this is a mass market deck. It's a really cool box. I don't usually talk boxes, you guys, but I'm, I'm doing that today. So here is the guidebook. It's a nice, it's a nice good guidebook. So let me just, we'll talk about like some of the production quality of this deck and then we're gonna talk about the deck itself. Um, it's based on, well, see, a deck of daydreams and nightmares. Look at that exclamation point. There are a few artists whose work has sustained the power to shock, amaze, and delight audiences for over 500 years. But anyone who views the Garden of Earthly Delights will surely experience all three emotions at once. Although Hieronymus Bosch has a reputation of being a brilliant madman in his time. He was regarded as a master of art. His unique and dreamlike style led him to be crowned the first surrealist in a period where the artistic consensus was one of realism. Um, so renowned occultist and best-selling author, Travis McHenry has painstakingly isolated scenes and characters from Bosch's works to capture the philosophy of traditional tarot cards. The result is a deck that is beautiful, inspirational, and unlike anything you've ever seen before. Sometimes humorous, sometimes haunting, but always captivating, the Hieronymus Bosch tarot sets a new benchmark for modern tarot card decks. Okay, I feel like it was like a good idea for 
for me to read that to you because um, for several different reasons. The Hieronymus Bosch, or so Hieronymus Bosch, the artist, you know, 500 years ago we're talking, um, is someone, yeah, the first surrealist in a time period. I don't really know a lot about Hieronymus Bosch's artwork. Some of the things are familiar to me, just like in the landscape of, you know, the, like, artwork that you see, that you've seen in, like, in my, I don't know, my studies. I'm not an art, um, major, and uh, I don't study art much, but, uh, you know, I've been to museums. I, I mean, I've been around, so like some things are familiar to me. Anyway, um, Hieronymus Bosch, like I'd seen mostly, I'd seen this tarot deck before. I saw it on Giselle Madwitch's channel. I'm gonna, I'll link to that below because she does a really nice walkthrough of this deck, um, which I think she was gifted as well. Anyway, I'm like all that to say, I should start just flipping through. Like, look, that's a cool, this is a cool different colored um, gilding. It's not the soft kind, but it's not as like hurdy as others. So this deck has renamed all the majors um, pretty much. I think there's only a couple that have the same. They have key, it has a key word or key phrase um, underneath every single title. Um, and it has, it has the 22 majors of the tarot. Um, it's in order. That is freaky. <laughs> um, and they're, you know, like I said, the majors are renamed, but once we get into the suits, this deck goes off and does something completely different. Like it's not, it's not like tarot anymore at that point. It's, um, it's a completely different kind of tarot adjacent sort of system and I think that's cool I don't know like it's obviously it's in order I have not worked with this yet oh my god like what can you say it's like surreal absurd scary at times like disturbing confronting artwork and I'm all I'm here for that I'm so here for that kind of artwork um I, yeah, I, I dig it. I like things that are weird and offbeat and different and um, that march to be their own drum. I'm not like super into like horror, but I kind of like this weird, I kind of like this weird stuff. It makes you think. Anything that makes you think, anything that's a little bit different, I'm down for. Although, you know, if you've watched my channel before, you know that I have like I have, I like, I have traditional tarot decks, you know, and I like traditional and pretty artwork. Um, not, this is, be I think this is beautiful. So here's what happens in the minors is that we have berries, birds, skates, swords, vessels, books and coins and then sin, um, the seven deadly sins are in here as well. So it's in the guidebook it tells you you know that the cards are aligned with the elements so you know but obviously there's more than four suits here. And also, it's there's no minor numbered cards two through ten. It goes, it has court cards, as you can see. Oh, my big thumb was right in the way, and that I love that. That's so weird. Um, and aces, right? So each of these suits that corresponds to an element has um, these like four or five courts and then an ace but all of them have um a key like several keywords or phrases ace of skates instability danger uselessness so i'm gonna play with this deck i'm gonna definitely use it it's i don't you know i don't think i'm gonna be using it at all like a like a traditional tarot it doesn't want that it it's, wants to be something different. And with key words and phrases, it can act as like an oracle, you know? 
um, but there's also, it also ties in, it has a tie with an element. So we're gonna, we're gonna try it out. I mean, I'll report back to you and let you know. I don't know if I'm gonna be using it like here this month um, or when, um, but I, I'm excited that I have it. I thank, you know, my lovely friend for um, sending it to me. And um, yeah, so yeah, that's the, um, that's the Hieronymus Bosch tarot. All right, I'm probably not gonna edit this, so we're just gonna keep going. So speaking of art decks, now that's a weird one. This is also a strange one. This I bought myself. Um, I don't know, I got like a wild hair about art decks recently and because I don't, I'm not usually the type of person um, that has, uh, I, I don't have a lot of decks that are curated art decks. But apparently it's something I'm into right now. <laughs> you know, you know how you go through phases of things. This is the Klimt, uh, Klimt Tarot. And um, it is using uh, Gustav Klimt artwork. Um, so Hieronymus Bosch is 500 years ago, but Klimt is a painter from, I want to say, turn of the century, 18, is it turn of the century? 1800s. I, I know I looked it up because I'm also, like I said, not, um, I'm not well versed in all my artists. This is the painting, The Kiss, I believe it's called. That's the most famous one that I think most of us know. Oh, you can see, you can see <laughs> the reflection of my camera there. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so I've been, I've been wildly interested in, um, these art decks now. I don't know if Bosch kicked it off, but I have several others on my wish list now. Um, but yeah, so this I'm obsessed with. And from the moment I got it, I have not stopped looking through it. I haven't done a lot of readings with it yet, but I, I'm i in love with this deck. This is like one if you want me to do a deep dive on, I will. I edged mine, um, I edged mine in black. And it's out of order because I've been shuffling it and looking at it. Look at that devil card. And I love, um, I mean, I'm, I'm just like in, entranced by this deck. And I've seen, you know, I've seen Klimt's artwork before, but it never really like, you know, spoke to me. Um, these figures are haunting. It is um, beautiful. It's just beautiful. Like... I don't know, kind of disturbing in some ways. Some of these, like, look at this death card, amazing. Um, some of the figures are like really emaciated. There's like, um, oh, am I upside down? That one's upside down. Um, look at like, these are amazing paintings. And I'm pretty sure that these are pieced together and then there's like elements added for it to be the tarot because I'm I'm pretty sure it wasn't Klimt who made a tarot deck it's like they took his artwork but like look at this you guys oh my god and I love the blingy I know some people don't love the blingy um but I love it black and gold oh so good yeah this is gorgeous and I just look at that judgment card I can't wait to start working with this more in depth like this is gonna be one of those that's an interesting empress sorry um this is I feel like this is gonna be one of those decks like the new paladini that just like comes in and takes over and I just like adore look at it I just want to like sit here and look at it look at it Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. It's a low scare bio, so it's mass market. Shuffle's great. I love these. I love the low scare bio. So yeah, I'm, oh my gosh, look at the fool. These are so good. It's so good. Uh, let me know if you have this deck. I wanna hear what other people think of it. I haven't really looked. I looked at like silent, a uh, silent flip through. Oh, it's amazing, that tower card. God. Um, Tell me, yeah, tell me if this is a deck you know and love 
or know and hate <laughs> or whatever. I'm just like, I'm interested in out there. So obviously the kiss is the lover's card, which is amazing. Amazing. Oh my gosh. I love these. Yeah. Look at this chariot card. This might be my new favorite chariot card ever. Ugh, so beautiful. I just love it. And like I said, I don't know that much about the artist. Except for just the famous painting, The Kiss. So yeah, so that is the Klimt. Klimt? Klimt? Am I saying that right? The Klimt Tarot. Okay, and next up, let me, yeah, let me show you an oracle that I got. The Witch's Oracle. So I purchased this myself, and this is the Witch's Oracle. I saw this, where did I see this? Um, I saw this on, here's the guidebook. It's nice, it's a big guidebook. Um, I saw this, oh, Metal Arc Mystic, Renee, Renee. I saw this on Metal Arc Mystic Renee's channel. Oh, this is one of those where the little cards like to stick. This is, you know, this is an oracle, definitely larger than tarot size. It's like a purple, it's like a deep purple. I have not edged it, but I probably will, maybe. I don't know, oh, cause the, the, the front borders are white, so I don't usually edge decks like that cause I don't want the bleed over. But I don't know, um, I don't know what it was about this. I mean, like I've told you guys before, I'm not, I don't call myself a witch, but I definitely do witchy things. Um, and I like witchy things. So I really just, I really was just drawn to the artwork, the, um, the titles and keywords of this deck. And I think I, I really like this like black, um, title border here, bottom border. I think it's so neat. I can see this. I can also, like, I think I just, I could see it working really well with lots of different decks. I won't flip through every single card, but I just, yeah, broomstick, cleansing, pentacle, evoca evocation, serpent, power, wand, intention. Like, I love these unification, the black hat, psychism. The Athame Commander of Power, Holy Stone Protection. I can see using this in, you know, in readings, but also in craft, um, maybe even in writing, um, maybe spell crafting as well, um, which I have done and do. Spell, enchantment, look at this. Um, I really like it. And the guidebook, I haven't really got, um, I haven't spent any time reading that, but it looks like it's gonna, it looks like it's gonna be a pretty good, uh, hefty sized guidebook with plenty of information. So yeah, I'm really excited about this one. I'm looking forward to using it soon. I think I have some, I have some pairs that I think it might, it might work with, um, some tarot decks that I think it might pair well with. So that is the Witch's Oracle. Okay, and I've got three more to show you. I'm saving the best for last, or I'm saving, I'm saving <laughs> a beautiful gift for last. So hold on, let me check. Yeah, my lighting's okay. So, um, all right, so for those of you weavers um, that are out here as well, you might remember um, that I had wanted this deck and purchased it during one of our, <laughs> one of Dom and Shell's, um, live chats for the membership. Um, so in a Weaver Live, I, midway through, uh, one of my buddies, uh, one of my Weaver buddies said, I had thought that this, that it was, um, that the Stunning Tarot by Yonasa Yaos was completely sold out, but she um, was like, nope, it's not. So I literally went, you know, right over to the website and purchased it right in the moment. So the Stunning Tarot, I have, um, this is not a new deck, it's just new to me. This is a new printing, the um, edition four. I think it is now sold out, but I will definitely leave links to it below. 
Um, it's out of order because I've been flipping through it. Oh my God, it's luscious Nat cardstock. Love it so much. I have had my eye on this deck for, I mean, I guess ever since I started looking at tarot because it's been around. Um, probably first saw it on Maureen's channel, um, my friend Maureen, The Waves of Your Soul. And um, she loves this deck. I know, and Dawn Michelle I saw, she, I know for her new moon, I think new moon readings or dark moon readings is this is one of the ones that Dawn Michelle has made videos about as well. They have a different um, edition. It's like more um, tarot size or more square rather than this long, um, this long rectangle. <clears throat> and I had told myself, um, that this was a deck <clears throat> that I could get, you know, like I wasn't sure if it was for me. Um, and then when she did announce the, when Jonas Yes announced the reprint, I really wanted to get it, but I missed the boat. <laughs> um, like the email newsletter that went out, I thought I'd, uh, I missed the boat for getting it like on the day that she opened up sales. But then I was lucky to have a Weaver friend. Um, so, so Yonasa Yaus, um, her artwork is so unique um, and to her own vision. And it is, it is tarot, but it is something else too. Um, it is just something else entirely. I love the coloring of this deck. I love the purple. Um, each of the suits has its own kind of dominating color. So the coins in this yellow, um, the majors are different colors. Um, this is, okay, this Wheel of Fortune card is probably my favorite Wheel of Fortune I've ever seen. I mean, you guys, look at that with the, the baby and the sprout and this face like inside this flower that's amazing right I've never seen anything like that for a wheel of fortune the wheel of fortune always I feel like ends up being the most boring card in a tarot deck because nobody re-envisions it um beyond just like the wheel and the four fixed signs and I really appreciate Yonasa Yas's um interpretation so yeah, each um, each suit has its own color and theme. That's the death card. Um, so the cups are all red um, and they have, the cups have like an um, Arabian Nights kind of theme. And then the pentacles or coins have an Egyptian theme. I love this ace of coins, so good. Um, and then the swords are mermaids, which is interesting because the swords are air, but it's mermaids. Um, I believe Yonasa Yaus follows a Marseille tradition um, and she, um, but this is like not Marseille. I mean, like it's not Marseille depictions at all, um, but I'm not sure how aligned the um, meanings are here with Marseille only, but I mean, it's a chance for me to read numerically as well, but also this is a very intuitive deck. You know, it's very intuitive. The color story is such a important part of the story. Did I say color story and story? Um, oh, and the wands are like witchy and all purple. Like, I love this purple. It's so good. Yeah, and the cups and the swords are red. So, I don't know, I wonder if you guys can see that little. This is just a stunning, ah uh ha sorry. <laughs> How many times have people made that joke? Um, the stunning tarot is beautiful. And this is a special deck and I can't wait to use it. I wonder how, I'm like excited to see how like it's going to unfold in my practice, like what it's going to do for me in my practice. These reds are like, oh, amazing. Yeah, beautiful. I can't, I mean, like it, I can shuffle it if I do, if I split it in half, but I can't shuffle the whole thing with this long. Yeah. Also, P.S. It hasn't arrived. I was waiting for it to arrive, 
but I also got the Anasa Yao 7th edition. That's the same style. That's this, uh, this long rectangular shape. Okay. And last but not least, I said like the best, I was saving the best for last because, um, this is so exciting and fun, um, and wonderful. Andy Taylor, um, who you may, many of you may know, Andy Taylor, a uh, member of our tarot community, who's a deck creator, um, is just, just such a lovely person. Um, and I've, I've known Andy for a while. We go way back to role playing the tarot on, um, Lisa's channel. And she is just an amazing person. Um, we, she sent me, I thought she was only going to send me one deck, but she sent me two. So the first deck that she sent me, she sent me it in this little white tuck box, which you don't need to see. She sent me her tarot, the tarot of feeling. Um, so she said, this is a prototype of a deck that she revamped from its original 2019. So this is the 2023 version. Uh, and this is a prototype. I'm going to definitely link to Andy's shop down below. It's called Metaphysics Made Easy. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Metaphysics Made Easy on Instagram. Uh, on Instagram and that's her Etsy shop as well. So she sent me the guided edition. This is a revamped. Um, and this one is... The final edition looks different than this one, and that will be coming out in June 2023. So this is a prototype, so I get like a special one. I don't know what the final edition is going to look like, but this is really cool. So the Tarot Feeling um, has been around obviously since 2019. So Tarot Feeling. All right, so let's just let's just flip through it. So Andy in here has a an about me. And then a um, about the tarot of feeling. So let's read. The tarot of feeling 2023 is designed to feel like going through an old box of photographs spanning through a lifetime. While creating this version of the deck, I was feeling retrospective, maybe a little more serious and somber than the first time around. The changes to the cards from the original edition of the deck represent how the energy of these cards spoke to me in a new way in the last year. I hope the emotion of each card reaches you as it did me through the images and helps you to find your path ahead, Andy. So I don't know if that's going to stay the same way or how different the final edition is, but you know, we'll just take a look at this one. Oh, it's a little sleepy. So I, it's so funny because I talked to Andy and I was like, I love, oh, and it has, so this is the guided edition. So it has the, the image and the title, and then it has the, um, the, you know, meaning card, meaning guided meaning on the back. So, oh my gosh, how cool is that? <laughs> Baby Yoda, magician. I, um, so anyway, it was funny cause I had, I was talking with Andy and I, you know, I love photo, I love photo decks and I was like, I love photo decks. And she was like, yeah, you need my decks. <laughs> she makes photo, she makes these lovely photo decks. So, oh my God, this is beautiful. I love this so much. This is actually my kind of first time flipping through it. I have had some experience with the other decks that I showed you, but this is obviously in order. And it's really like, this is real first impressions. Oh my God, I love that Wheel of Fortune. That's wonderful. Justice. Let's read the back of Justice because this is interesting. Not you know, not a very typical depiction of justice. So justice, collectively our moral compasses very greatly. There are some, but relatively few issues that we all agree on as absolute, um, as absolute, sorry, right and wrong can be hazy at best. Truth and lie can depend on the teller's perspective. When we are looking for what's right and true, we can only find it by trusting ourselves first. Trust in the absolute knowing that we that when we hear truth, we will recognize and know it. 
Hmm, that is really cool. Yeah, I really like um, Andy's way of looking at tarot. Death card, temperance. Oh, I love that, the painter's palette. That's awesome. The devil, oh, that's so cheeky. The tower, the star, interesting. The moon, this is so pretty. These are really, really spot on um, choices for the photos. I really, I gotta say. The world, the person standing at the top of this mountain. Ace of Cups. I like, you know, like I actually think I prefer modern photo decks to modern like art, like drawn art that has modern depictions. I think I actually like modern photos better. We know I like landscape photos. This is cool for the Eight of Cups. Oh, look at that. That's really nice. Oh, that's beautiful. I love this. I wonder what the other one's gonna look like. I'm gonna find out from Andy what the new finalized version of this is gonna look like. I'd love this in, in like standard tarot size. Oh, the King of Cups. This is so good. Wow. I really like the, the way she's like done the muted filter here. That's so cool as the Five of Wands. It's like a, it seems like a business meeting or some kind of meeting. And they're definitely not, I don't know, hearing her or them. Six of Wands. Oh, the colors are different. Are the colors aligned with chakras or something? I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it. But I know that Andy, or she just has different. Andy has a chakra deck as well. Oh, that's a great Ten of Wands. Look at these pages. I love, oh my God, I already passed it, but there was a knight that was a doggy. So good. King of Wands. Ace of Swords. These are really good. These are such good photo choices. Like such spot on. They're very much in alignment with how I read tarot too. And I, I, it's very much a tarot of feeling. It's very much a feeling deck. Ten of Swords. Wow, that is really interesting as a choice. As a mom, like that <laughs> that resonates <laughs> with the baby like crying and needing you let's read the back for this one real quick ten of swords the ten of oh there's a typo but i'm sure she's fixed it because this is just a prototype the ten of swords is the moment when you feel like you just might have reached rock bottom you honestly just can't take any more it's a breaking point you may be down, but you are most certainly not out. Have a good scream, let it out, and then look around and find that glimmer of hope on the horizon. It's there, it's there, and with it, the possibility that everything and anything is possible. And isn't that something worth exploring? So this guide um, with the guide, guided edition, is much more than just like a rote tarot meaning. It's in, it's a message. There's a message on the backs of these cards too. Oh my gosh, I feel that. I feel that with the babies, you know? Um, Page of Swords, Knight of Swords, Queen, King, Ace of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles. <laughs> Looks like Cruella. Is that supposed to? <laughs> um, five of Pentacles. That's a little hard to see, but I guess that's the point. Six of Pentacles. Oh my gosh, look at how cute the Seven of Pentacles is. Oh, that's so cute. I like it. Eight of Pentacles. Oh, I love this. That makes me think of my partner. Oh man, that's so good. I love this, Ten of Pentacles. This is so good. I love, I really do. Oh my gosh, Queen of Pentacles with the coffee. I really love this. I love this version a lot. 
Well, I the only thing I would want different is that I'd want it in standard tarot size. So hint, hint, Andy, I'm not sure if that's what you have in the works. I'll have to find out from you. And I'll find out from you, and if I get any info, I'll put it in the description box below. Okay, so that, I was expecting one deck from Andy, she told me, <laughs> she was sending it to me, but she sent me um, another, another kind gift in here, and this is the, look at how beautiful, and it came also, she wrapped it up in another, um, like, beautiful, um, vintage like, wrap, um, but I, I don't know why I didn't bring that over. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I just tied it up with these, untied these ribbons. So, this, for everyone, I think, I'm, am I debuting this? I'm not sure if anybody else has shown this yet. So this is the Feel Your Chakras Oracle, the Vintage Edition. So many of you have already may have already seen this deck. I'm sure if you've seen, because I know Lisa was just showing it off and Dawn was showing it off and they have a different version. But lucky me, I get this super cool, and honestly, this is so much more my, this is so much more my aesthetic, this vintage. I, probably Dawn, too. Um, I'm like, Dawn, you know, I know your aesthetic. Everybody <laughs> kind of does, right? It's on the screen. Anyway, so the Feel Your Chakras Oracle Vintage Edition. That's so cool. These are the backs. Um, so this is a home, this is homemade, the vintage homemade Feel Your Chakras. This is homemade. That's so special. That's just so special, the homemade one. That's like a lot of, a lot of work. Um, and it came with this, um, <laughs> it came with this as well. Her name is Viola. Get to know her by playing her favorite song, Me and the Man and the Moon by Helen Kane. Draw some cards, ask Viola. Tell me about yourself. How do you feel about me? And what will my experience be from us working together? Oh, cool. So maybe let's flip through and then maybe we'll ask Viola these questions here. Um, so these are, these are the backs. Or are the backs all different? Oh, I think they are. I think for each of the chakras. So let's take a look. So we have, let me grab all the root. Uh, let me do it one by, let me do it by chakra. Okay, so here we have the root chakras and it has these backs. Are they all the same? Yeah, the back for all the root chakras are the same. It's this um, house, farm, barn, farmhouse. So pretty. It's got like washi. So I am disconnected. I am fearful, unfocused, disorganized, restless. This is so pretty. Anxious. Oh, and by the way, Andy, this is scented. I'm like sniffing it. It smells delicious. Andy scented it with some sort of incense or spray or I don't know what. It smells delicious. I am not taking care of my physical resources. Angry. Struggling with change. Okay, I'm just going to flip through because I want to do the reading and I don't want to keep you here forever. Keeping people at a distance. This is so cool. It is sort of the same image just moved around a bit. The tag is moved around a bit. I love this. I love this. It's so pretty. So those are the roots. There's a good good size amount of root chakras. And I gotta say, I'm not like a I'm not like well versed in my sh in chakras, but I'm definitely into keywords. So probably we'll learn more about chakras. This is a great 
deck to teach me, <laughs> to teach me, because I have been wanting to learn more about chakras. And can you, oh, this is gonna go so well next to the white sage tarot. <gasps> Perfect for the white sage, which is also a chakra deck. That's gonna be awesome. Okay, so these are the sacrals and these are the backs. Look at the cat, oh my God, that is fantastic. So I'm just gonna flip through real quick. Lonely, constant fatigue, lack of passion, unsexy, wow. Lack of creativity. I need like one little card that gives me like a breakdown of the, of the chakras. I don't know if that's something you have in the other decks, Andy, but that, that's something I would enjoy. <laughs> Um, I'm like talking just to Andy here. Emotionally open. So these are the sacral. Okay, let's move on because I re really want to do the reading. So this is, wow, there's a lot for solar plexus. I don't know if they're even Steven or if it's um, a different number of cards. Look at that. That's beautiful. Beautiful. So lack self trust. So there's, you know, the cards for underactive, overactive, and balanced and balanced, right? Underactive, overactive, and balanced. So three different ways um, experiencing the chakra, solar plexus. So that's yeah. This has. Um, act spontaneous. So these are so cool. I really, yeah, I really can't wait to work with this. So here we have the heart chakra. Let's take a look at the backs of these. You guys, this is so gorgeous. I so these this this deck um is going to be available this m in May. 2023, I believe. I'll make sure to check with Andy and put the um and put the correct um you know uh, links to everything down below and or when things are going to be available. Um, look at that. The back is so pretty. Oh my gosh, this is so my so totally my aesthetic. Okay, so there's yeah several underactive, several for I love but can be overly self-critical. I love, but, I love, but I can be codependent. I love, but I neglect my own emotions. I love myself, but, so it's, um, it feels, I love and have connections. So it feels very balanced. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading the balanced ones. But it's very balanced with, you know, things that are negative, positive, kind of neutral, like a spectrum of, um, of, of things. So let's see. These are the throat chakras. Here are the backs of the throat. Oh, it's a typewriter. Vintage. Sorry. <laughs> I'm such a goofball. Um, it's a vintage typewriter. This is so cool. Oh my goodness. I talk more than I listen. So these are the overactive. I'm not gonna read them all to you. But if you want to, if you want me to do a more like, you know, involved, like kind of walk through after I've used this card and have learned about chakras through this, please let me know. Okay, and then here's third eye. Da, da, da. Third, is that? Yeah, third eye. And it has this beautiful flower. This is so special. I mean, like, I feel the care that went into this. It's just like, and that's just how I've, you know, how Andy's energy is, like the care and intention. And she's just a very, she's a special person too. Um, really sweet. Uh, so cool. I see and can get mentally overwhelmed. This is, this is, I see and I can lack clarity. And these are the balanced ones. So there's a few balanced. Okay, and then here's the last one, the crown. There's a good number of those here. I, I don't know if it's all exactly the same. I haven't counted yet. I'm also smelling this like sweet, um, 
very floral. Um, and my, well, my, my candle's also giving off a scent, but I can definitely smell this deck. Okay, so here's the crown, and there's the backs. So good. I sense my higher self. I sense separation. I sense a lack of trust in the universe. I sense disassociation from my body. Wow. This is so good. I really, really like it. I really, really love this. Like, oh my gosh, so beautifully done and handmade. Oh my goodness. So let's do this. Let's take um, Viola. <laughs> um, that makes me think of um, um, Shakespeare in Love, Viola. <laughs> Um, and draw some cards and we're going to ask Viola to tell me about yourself. How do you feel about me? And what will my experience be from us working together? And then definitely soon I will, oh, I want to be careful shuffling, but it doesn't feel like fragile, you know, even though this is homemade and vintagey. <laughs> um, I got to listen to that song now too. That's going to be cool. Okay, so we're going to tell me about yourself. How do you feel about me? And what will my experience be from us working together? Wow, this haul video is going to be a lot longer than I thought. But I don't care. <laughs> I'm having fun. Like, Looking at my decks and talking about them with you all is like just absolutely one of my favorite things to do, um, to share my enthusiasm and love for tarot and oracle. So I don't mind if I just chat on, okay, overhanding is a little bit worrisome because I don't, <laughs> I don't want to bend or rip or hurt the cards because they're so pretty, but Riffle shuffling is no problem. All right, so let's ask Viola. We're going to ask Viola. Tell me about yourself. How do you feel about me? And what will my experience be from us working together? Okay, so if I remember correctly, we have... Here, this is the sacral chakra, I want to say. This was the, no. Oh, I've got it wrong already. I know this is throat chakra. So let's see, what is this one? This is sacral. Oh, I got it right. So about yourself, I feel emotionally open. So Viola, that's wonderful. I feel emotionally open and in balance with the sacral chakra. Okay, and then this is the... Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember the chakra. I'll have to look. The root. Okay. How do you feel about me? <laughs> I'm giving myself care. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I certainly am. This um, video is me um, doing self-care right this moment because I... This is an outlet uh, for me. Like I said, it just makes me happy to share with you. So that's really neat. <laughs> um, and what will my experience be from us working together? So very balanced so far. Um, it's going to be, I talk, but I am not being honest with myself. Oh, I see. Okay. So, huh. So this, this deck seems like it's ready to help me find my voice um, and be honest with myself. Well, not just find my voice, but find, be honest with myself. I talk, but I'm not being honest with myself. Um, well, that's definitely some work. I, I kind of have a feeling I know exactly what that's about. <laughs> um, and yeah, and true. Um, wow. Thanks for calling me out, you little chakra deck, Viola. Um, wow, that was amazing. Let me put some of these decks back here together. So um, this is just wonderful. Like I can't, I probably shuffled the title. No, I didn't. I didn't shuffle the title card. 
So that is the Feel Your Chakras Oracle Vintage Edition by Andy Taylor. And then we also took a look at the beautiful Stunning Tarot. The beautiful and stunning Stunning Tarot. And the Klimt Tarot here as well. And let me just grab this guy. The Eighth House Tarot. And some of the others I didn't, I put back in their boxes already. So we'll just leave it at that. Alrighty. So that's it. I thank you so much for sticking around with me. Um, like I said, I absolutely love being here in this space with you, sharing the things that make me happy. And I appreciate you again for sticking with me. I hope that you all have a beautiful, wonderful day.